Yeah. Oh boy. Um. All right. Uh, Pete Dominic. Here. Now wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What did you wait, say? Just, just, just. Thank you. <laughs> Mini me is what I call him. All right. So. All right. So I, I, I suspect. The vast majority, all of you don't know who Pete Dominic is, but let me just give you a little bit, a little bit of background. Turn the light on! <laughs> Jesus, you Lord, I... A little bit of background, okay? Um, so Pete says he had some involvement in um, the John Stewart show. Mm. Um, he said he also occasionally would like stumble onto the set of the Colbert Report, mm, uh, you know, maybe, I don't know, I don't see a lot of that in Wikipedia, but then something I have been able to confirm, he was, this is true, he was a CNN correspondent and he had a regular recurring segment, true, called Pete on the Street. And and that, I, did anybody see Pete on the street? Everybody did. I mean, <laughs> everybody here did. It, and it ran, it ran for like four weeks. It was dynamite. Eight weeks. Eight weeks. <laughs> dynamite. That, he interviewed people. Hi, I'm Pete. They're like, get away from me. Um, it was very, that no, was really um, scintillating. Groundbreaking. So, so, okay, as you can tell, because I make more fun of him than anybody else, you know, this really is my, my bald brother. Um, I love him dearly. Uh, sometimes he gets too close to my wife and I get irritated. Um, but um, no, they're, they're really, and you have to follow Ellie Mistal, which is not easy, Pete. But um, every year he comes down to D.C. We hold our annual Team Justice event right in the shadow of the U.S. Capitol, or as I call it, the crime scene. And he closes the show each year. And I, I love him dearly. And I'm so happy that... Uh, he's going to close out the show for us, Pete Dominic. Oh, wow. oh, yeah. He's a little guy. He's a little guy. Keep it going for my father. <laughs> uh, and all my opening acts. Fuck De Niro, Lawrence O'Connell, Lil Steven. We'll get a picture in a little bit. Yeah. Everybody's like, Bob wants a picture with you. I'm like, oh, oh Bob. It's hard. Um, I I just I like to come in here. I came here. I don't like Glenn. Nor do I think justice matters. But I do like a free button, and I really want to introduce my my daughter to Ellie Mistal. So that's that's really why I'm here. Uh, I've known Glenn for a really long time. We met at MSNBC when Glenn Kirshner came up to me in the green room. And he was a 30-year federal prosecutor, and I was a comedian and a, a pundit and the warm-up act and the fluffer at the Colbert <laughs> Report. I don't want to brag. And he says to me, he says, uh, you know, I'm funny. <laughs> and I said, I go, I go, listen, all due respect, people who are funny don't tell you. <laughs> And then I found out he was a 30-year federal prosecutor, and uh, I got intimidated. <laughs> but the point is, justice does actually matter. The work that he's doing and that many of you are here supporting really does matter. And this is the saddest truth, and Ellie knows this, and everybody that spoke knows, every here that knows this, this is the saddest truth. We, we people here, are the ones that we've been waiting for. We're, we're it. That's it. it yep. Yep. It, <laughs> who said it first, Ellie? I don't remember. Yeah. This guy had like an afro. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> so, when I first met Glenn Kirshner, by the way, uh, I was pretty impressed by, I, like, the fact that I was sitting next to him on a panel at MSNBC showed us everything that's wrong with cable news and media, period, in corporate media, because I shouldn't have been there. I shouldn't be here, frankly. I actually was outside cold, and somebody said they needed a, a waiter, so I came in. <laughs> but let me just uh, reveal to you the behind-the-scenes truth of this guy, Glenn Kirshner. The man is a Luddite. 
He has no idea about technology. The fact that he has gotten to be such a big deal pisses me off so much. I've been in media and comedy for 15 years. This guy is like a former federal prosecutor, army jag, football player, all these things. He's on TV like three times. He tweets once. He's got three million followers. What the fuck? Like he's got a billion followers. The guy can wake up in the morning and be like, I just farted 7,000 likes. I say something brilliant. Nothing. Nothing. I've been doing it my whole career. Nothing. This guy. Let me, let me just... Let me take you behind the scenes. Let me read you text messages from Glenn Kirshner to me that he never wanted you to hear. This is, here it is. Number one, do you know anybody who can fix my Nokia Palm Pilot? <laughs> he writes everything on legal bed. He's on YouTube. He does videos every damn day. He never said, he's on vacation doing videos. Thinking about using lighting for my videos. <laughs> Any thoughts on lighting? <laughs> and then this is not one that he would want me to share, but he texted me this about three months ago. I like this kid Vivek, he's got moxie. <laughs> Okay, uh, also, Glenn is killing it on YouTube with his old Justice Matters and everything he's doing is so important. So important that he's such a big deal. He really is. I watch all his videos. He's been amazingly generous to me. We've known each other a long time. I've got, I get to interview him every, every few weeks on my show, which is a very big deal. I do it for my shed. It's a podcast. <laughs> Bob's coming on next week. He doesn't know. <laughs> Um, but here's the thing, uh, I watch him on YouTube, I watch him on MSNBC, but my safe space, and some of yours, is TikTok, okay? <laughs> so the other day, I go to my TikTok app, and this motherfucker is there! He's there! He goes, hello friends! I'm like, no! Not here too! This is my safe space from you, Kirshner! <laughs> Hey friends, Justice Matters, how are you on TikTok? Here's the other behind the scenes. When you connect with Kirshner, have you ever done this? You probably, he's probably, he probably have an MSNBC camera. He's probably got it set up. But a low grade podcast like me, you connect with him. And I, I interview big name people all the time. I'm telling you, I'm a big deal, miss. I know. <laughs> Everybody comes on, they're the same. They show up, they show up on the screen, you do it remotely, there they are. Glenn Kirshner comes on, he's fucking with his camera for the first 20 minutes. He's like, can you see me? He's got a monocle on, it's unbelievable. He's so old, he prosecuted Capone. He prosecuted fire, Ellie. Ellie, he prosecuted fire! That was supposed to kill, Bob. Supposed to kill, didn't do well. I wrote that on the West Side Highway. <laughs> the bottom line is, we're the ones we've been waiting for. And Glenn Kirshner is the change we want to see. Recently, I interviewed a guy who told me, a guy named Jerry Colonna, who's an executive coach. Some of you know what that is. I don't even know what an executive is, but he told me something that his daughter told me, and my daughter's here tonight with me because I think it's super important. He said to me, uh, it's not enough to be an ally. It's not enough to be an ally. His daughter told him this after the George Floyd protest. She was out in the streets protesting like a lot of young people. It's not enough to be an ally. You have to be part of the conspiracy. You have to be working on the action to be the change that you want to see. Whether it's Bob De Niro or Little Steven or anybody else in entertainment that puts their political capital, as Glenn said so articulately at the top, everybody has something to lose. We all have something to lose. I got involved in my local school board fight. And Glenn knows this because I reached out to him when it happened. Because we were fighting these horrible racist, fascist, modern day mafia types. And I spoke at the school board against them and I posted on Facebook and the people in my community know me because I'm on MSNBC with Glenn Kirshner. And because of the work that I was doing, because of the activism I was doing, 
the local fascists called child protection services on me and said I was abusing my children. It was like, with all due respect, finding a horse head in your bed. They let me know who they did, who did it to me. They tried to silence me. It damaged my life, my marriage. It damaged, I can't even, I can barely talk about it, but my daughter is here tonight and that's why I'm here because Glenn is such an inspiration and so many of, Lawrence O'Donnell is such an inspiration. Thank you, Mr. De Niro, for doing this. You're an inspiration for actually being the change you want to see. When the detectives came to my house to interview my daughters to ask if I had done anything abusive to them because they were trying to silence me. They will try to silence you because these are the tactics they use. My, my almost 19-year-old daughter who's here tonight said to this detective, in my living room, the lowest moment of my life as a parent became the proudest moment of my life as a parent. She said to that detective, she said, before you ask me any questions, I want you to know that the only reason you're here is because my dad is an advocate for people not like us. That's why you're here. My dad is someone I respect. My dad is someone I care about. My dad would never do anything, tear anything like I has been accused of him. They're trying to silence him. That's why you're here. And that's why I brought her here tonight, to meet all these people. Because not only are we the ones that we're waiting for, she and our kids are the ones we're waiting for. If you don't role model this behavior, we can all sit here, we can all sit here in our loft and, 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 without whatever privilege we have. You better put your fucking capital on the line. You better listen to him and all these other influential people and do walk the walk. Be it. Put that capital line. We have Ganel Acalino here tonight. What an unbelievable man he is. He gave his body on January 6th. He gave his body on January 6th. You should see the pictures of his body. You should read about him. Read his book. If you can't rhetorically go to a microphone, say a thing, support somebody, if you can't be the change you want to see, if you can't follow and understand why justice matters is so important, you aren't doing it right, you aren't one of the ones we've been waiting for. But you, sir, are. I thank you so much for being an inspiration for doing this. Mr. De Niro, everybody else that's come here, you guys are absolutely the ones we've been waiting for. We are so grateful to you for supporting his work, which is so important. I wish you weren't so successful, <laughs> but I am proud that you are who you are, that you've done what you've done, that you've role modeled the change that you wanna see for me and for so many other people. Thank you for getting us together tonight. I will see you at our next modeling shoot. Give it up for Glenn.